Thank you so much for giving us another Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the chance to continue the reads of the list, which cost a lot of knowledge in our lives. Bless our parents who work hard to support us. Bless our teachers who are doing their best to inspire and inspire to guide us as we should be in the trying pandemic. Bless our country and the people who will continue to fight them to stop the pandemic. Lord, fill us with your wisdom, wisdom and knowledge and understanding. understanding. Give us good memories and remember what we are going to study now. Thank you for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day for studying the page with life in the future. Thank you so much for giving us another day how are you going to prolong the lifespan of the computer? What are the different things that we need to do to prevent, to avoid? And what are the different things that we have to perform for us to prolong the lifespan of the computer? In the next slide, you will now be able to see the different objectives of this quarter for this week. So you have to identify how to use appropriate PPE or personal protective equipment in line with standard procedures. Enumerate how to check the normal functions of computer systems and networks in accordance with manufacturer's instruction. Then we have determined how to perform scheduled periodic maintenance in accordance with manufacturer's requirements. Familiarize yourselves on how to repair materials when needed in accordance with established procedures. Replace materials when needed in accordance with established procedures. Respond to unplanned events or condition in accordance with established procedures. As a future computer technician, you as a student who will be a computer technician sooner or later, you or we must be diligent and eager to know the different procedures in using the tools for configuring computer and network system because this will guide you in carrying out a particular job in proper manner. Once you already identify the competencies, you must also acquire the appropriate skills to apply them in real-time situation. Windows and other Microsoft products have their built-in troubleshooting tools that bear little or no resemblance to the fixed and troubleshooters. So sometimes we do not need any other software application for us to troubleshoot or remedy the problems that we might encounter in our computer system. For those troubleshooting techniques is already built into your computer. But it helps a lot whenever we have a separate troubleshooting techniques or troubleshooter software updates. Here are the steps to find about a dozen options for fixing problems related to program compatibility, hardware and audio, networking, security, Windows Update, Performance, and Power Usage. You just have to go to the Start button if you're using a Windows 7 or a Windows 10. But since I'm using a Windows 8, you can simply search Control Panel. Then after that, you just have to click Systems and Security. Then you can click System. Or you can click Action Center. Under the Action Center, you can see now the different buttons there. You just have to perform each button for you to resolve the issue that you might encounter or that you are currently encountering. So you can see their system. You have to change that one if, if you need to change it. The maintenance. So that is how easy you're going to go to the action center and to resolve the problem that you might encounter when it comes to programs compatibility, hardware and audio, and other network drivers. Now, setting up and maintenance, you have to clean or you have 
to provide a clean and dry work environment. So avoid clutters. Sufficient workspaces. Storage for disk and manual, so such as a built-in cabinet. Proper lightning is very much important. Sitting. Surge protectors. Screen glare shield and anti-static pad. But sometimes, we only use the anti-static pad if you're going to perform a system maintenance or troubleshooting techniques inside the system unit. This is we commonly neglect when we talk about computer system maintenance. The location of the computer. Where are you going to place the computer? What are the different things that we should avoid to prolong the lifespan of the computer? And one of them is to do not place the computer near the window or in front of the window. What is the purpose of or what is the reason that we have to avoid placing the computer in front of the window? The direct sunlight will penetrate the window and goes through to your computer system, wherein it will affect the computer system. So avoid that one. Before you acquire a system, prepare a proper location of the new system, free of airborne contamination such as smoke or other pollution. The environmental condition should be as constant as possible. Example, ventilation. You have to provide or you have to place the computer in a well-ventilated area. Do not abuse the computer. When we say abuse, do not use the computer 24 hours continuously. Give the computer a break to rest so that you can still use the computer properly and in that way you are prolonging the lifespan of your computer system you have to avoid as well or take away the computer to any radio transmitters and other sources of radio frequency interferences heating and cooling we have what we call the warm boot and the cold boot when we say warm boot and cold boot, proper shutting down of the computer. Or restarting the computer whenever you encounter lugs or hands. Power cycling, the on and off system. Static electricity. So example, you're going to use a vacuum cleaner which is operated using a power cable. Avoid that one. Instead, you can use a battery operated vacuum cleaner power line no noise now this is very important as well clean the computer components and peripherals when we say components we have there the mouse the keyboard the monitor and the system unit peripherals those are the different things or different devices that is being attached at the back of the system unit Example, the power cord, the power cable, the VGA cable, the PS2 cable, the USB cable. Also, the different devices or peripherals attached at the back of the system unit such as the printers and the speaker or any external devices. Now, generally, to maintain the system, the computer system, one way is, aside from placing a certain computer in a proper location, you have to clean the computer parts or components in the peripherals at least once a week or every day if you're using the keyboard or the mouse. Now, please, please take note of this one. Do not spray. Do not use a spray directly to a certain parts of the computer. Instead, you can use a cloth. Example, this is the cloth. The cloth. Spray. So make sure that it is um, partially damp, not totally damp. Then use that damp cloth in cleaning the surface of the computer. 
When you say surface, it's either the physical part of the computer or the outside part of the computer. Use the vacuum to suck up dirt, dust, or hair around the computer on the outside case. But do not use a vacuum inside your system unit as it generates a lot of static electricity. As I have mentioned a while ago, you have to avoid static electricity. So do not use a vacuum cleaner which is operated by a power plug wherein you need to plug into a socket. Use a vacuum cleaner which is operated by a battery. In that way, you are avoiding already or you are preventing a static electricity. Turn off the computer. It is very important to turn off the computer before cleaning the computer to avoid electrical shock. Be cautious when using any cleaning solvents. Some individuals may have allergic reactions to chemical, while some solvents can even damage the cases. So it's a two-way around. Either you as the users will be infected or affected by that chemical solvents, or the components of the computer will be affected by the chemical solvents. That is why it is very much important for us to use the proper, proper chemical solvents in cleaning the computer parts. Or you can use a face mask so that you cannot inhale those chemical solvents that you are using in cleaning the computer. When cleaning, be careful not to accidentally adjust any knobs or controls. Also, when cleaning the back of the computer, if anything is plugged in, make sure not to disconnect any of the plugs. When cleaning fans, especially the small fans within a portable computer or laptop, it is suggested that you either hold the fan or place something in between the fan blades to prevent it from spinning. So, example, the fan, this is our fan, place something in between so that it will not spin. In that way, you are also avoiding injuries to a particular user, to you as an individual. Never ever eat or drink around the computer for those liquid food might spill to any components of the parts of the computer that might affect the computer system. In cleaning the tools, I do suggest that you use a cloth when cleaning components such as outside the case or drive or mouse etc example this one you can use a cloth outside the part of the mouse or the headphone rather outside the mouse you have to clean or use a damp cloth as well so this one use a damp cloth or a cloth and you in you and cleaning this one if you're going to clean a circuit such as the ROM or the random access memory or motherboard, since they can generate electrostatic that can damage electronics. So use cloth, water or rubbing alcohol, but again, do not spray it directly to the, to the parts of the computer. Portable vacuum, please use a battery-operated portable vacuum. Cotton swabs or the cotton buds that we are using in cleaning our ears and in our nose, you can use that one in cleaning the parts or components of the computer. Case cleaning, the case of the system unit, you can use a damp cloth. You can also use lint-free cloth that has been slightly dampened with water for plastic case of PC components. For stubborn stains, add a little household detergent. Take note, add a little household detergent, let's say for example to a pail, not directly to the parts of the computer. Make sure all vents and air holes are hair and lint free by rubbing a cloth over the holes and vents. Take a vacuum around each of the hole, vents and crevices on the computer. Use a standard vacuum when cleaning the outside vents of a computer. However, if you need to clean the inside of the computer, use a portable or battery-powered vacuum cleaner to avoid or prevent static electricity. 
CDD, CD, DVD disc, you can use a damp cloth. CD, DVD roll, you can also use a cloth or a brush. You can use a brush in cleaning it. Hard drive cleaning, headphones cleaning, then keyboard cleaning. Now, please take note of this one. If you're going to clean a keyboard, you can also use a compressed air. But if you want, you can simply use a cloth. But if you're going to clean the keyboard, you can either remove the keyboard key cup one at a time, then clean it, then return it. Example, letter S. Remove letter S, clean the parts that has been removed, return letter S. Remove letter W, clean the part that has been removed, the letter W, then return. Now, if you're going to remove all the keyboard cups at the same time, make sure that you have a photographic memory wherein you can return those keyboard cups in its proper location. Otherwise, you can take a picture of it, then you can remove all the keyboard cups. And after cleaning it, return all the keyboard cups. CD cleaning, motherboard cleaning, mouse cleaning, printer cleaning, then scanner cleaning. So we're done already with the cleaning parts to maintain the computer system. Another way on how to maintain the computer system is to speed up the computer system. There are several reasons why the computer slows down suddenly. One, there is a virus. Two, you have plenty of files already inside the computer system. Three, and lastly, maybe you have already a program that is not, or you are not using it regularly. So what you need to do is to remove those files or programs that you don't need anymore. Now, in the speeding up the computer system, you can do whole machine diagnostic, desk and data diagnostic, the system snoopers. So when we say about when we talk about system snoopers, we are talking about the desk operating system, the DOS, the BIOS ROM or the read only memory. To regularly maintain the computer, there are three steps to fix bad sectors and some files, folders, and may be missing. We have this defrag, scan disk, and this cleanup. If you're going to perform this defrag, you can use, if you're using Windows 7 or Windows 10, you can go to the start button, point to accessories, then point tools, click this defrag. If you want, you can search it. If you're using Windows 8, or you can simply go to the computer. Go to computer, right click the system C, click properties, click the tools tab, then click optimize. After clicking optimize, you will now be able to see the optimized drives dialog box. So you can click one at a time. Click the first drive, click analyze. While waiting, click the second drive, analyze. Then you will know that it is being done or performed already if you saw already the date that is being performed. Then if that is done, you can click that already. Then start optimizing. Then you can perform that as well to the system C. Now, what is the purpose of this defrag? Example, I have four files. One, two, three, four. I deleted the fourth or the third file. So, how many files do I have already? And most of us will tell us that I only have three files since I deleted the file. But actually, I still have four files. Why four files? Yes, the file has been deleted, but it leaves a mark. This leaves a space already. So you cannot use this already. If I'm going to save another file, it will be saved beside the file number four. So here, you will tell me I, I only have one, two, three, four files because I deleted already the third file. 
but actually I still have five files. This remain a space. This is a waste now. The purpose of the this defrag is to move this fourth file to the third file to fill up the space that is being deleted. Then move the fifth file to the fourth spaces which comes up now to four files already. So that is the purpose of this defrag. Okay, after this defrag, you can also perform scan list. Now, if you receive the following messages, the disk check could not be performed because the disk check utility needs exclusive access to some Windows files on the disk. This is an alert message or an error message, meaning to say you are having a problem with the computer system. To solve that problem, perform scan disk. How are you going to do that? If you're using Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, you can start, click the start button, again, make accessories, click tools, then click scan this. But if you're using Windows 8, you can search. So example, search, scan this. Or, you can simply go to the computer, again, Click Computer, right-click System C, click Properties, click the Tools tab, then click Check. Click the Check Command button. Now, the computer will prompt you an alert message saying that you don't need to scan this drive or you have to scan this drive if you're having a problem. So just simply click the Scan Drive to perform Scan Desk you will know that the file has been or the computer has been scanned already if it will return to this dialog box. So that is scan this. The third or the last way on how are you going to boost the speed of the computer is to perform this cleanup. How are we going to perform this cleanup or what are the purpose of this cleanup? It removes temporary internet files. Remove downloaded programs such as MS Active, X Controls, and Java Applets. When you delete a certain file, it will be placed on the recycle bin. Meaning to say, a recycle bin is a temporary storage of all deleted files. Now, if you're going to perform this cleanup, those temporary deleted files that has been placed to your recycle bin will be removed permanently. So that is the purpose of this cleanup. It removes Windows temporary files such as error reports, removes optional Windows components that you do not use, and removes installed programs that you no longer use. So the following are the steps on how are you going to use this cleanup. Again, if you're using Windows 7 or Windows 10, you can simply click the Start button, click Accessories or All Programs, click Accessories, then click this cleanup. If that is Windows 8, you can simply click Search, then type this cleanup. Then just click this one. Click OK to perform this cleanup. Otherwise, you can go back again to Computer, right-click System C, click Properties, then click this Cleanup. Now, what is the purpose of this Cleanup? It compresses your file. If the file has been compressed, meaning to say, chances are, you are now given, you will now be given a higher capacity of hard disk already. Because the files has been compressed already. So that is the purpose of this cleanup. Now, what are the other reasons why we are encountering slowing down of the power core of computer system? As I have mentioned a while ago, virus. Now, virus is not just a word. Virus is an acronym that stands for Viral Information Resource Under Siege. Viral. 
meaning to say it distributed to the computer system it self replicates it multiplies now virus is the, is a destructive executable program that infects the other programs in a system and spreads by replicating itself it is designed to damage the victims of computer files it is coded by malicious programmers in a way that you can that they can spread in the system without one permission and knowledge now the following are the different kinds of viruses but actually the most popular one is what we call the worm and the trojan horse what is the difference between worm and trojan horse worm it attacks even the partition drive trojan horse it self replicates it multiplies by itself example i have the folder name my documents when i open the folder my documents i can still see a folder my documents so it self replicate it multiplies by itself now what will happen if it multiplies it will lessen the capacity of the hard disk if the le if the capacity of the hard disk has been lessened already that's the time that the computer system will slow down already because you have plenty of files already that suddenly prompt, prompt to your computer then we have spyware a spyware that what that gets the information of the users that is why please do not give your true identity or any information in any social networking sites we have the malware that is shortcut for mal suspicious software that is why sometimes if you open your email then you have an email with an attachment and you download it you can see at the bottom of the screen there keep and discard meaning to say it's certain file is now what we call a malware or mal suspicious file wherein you need to think it over first before you continuously download it again. aspects of computer virus finder searches for the new uninfected files replicator actually targets these files and infects them by multiplying themselves what is the effect of virus in our computer system it corrupts the file it slows down the speed of the computer system it causes the system to hang to lag frequently and it deletes various of files so files has been deleted suddenly or suddenly there are certain files that prompts on your screen even you do not do that or you do not perform that using the computer but where can we get those viruses one infected cd dvd disk pen drives flash drive if that cd dvd disk pen drives or flash drive has a virus already please do not insert it first otherwise you have to scan it first before you open the flash drive email that is why we have what called spam or that is why the computer will prompt an alert message if you would like to keep it or discard it browsing infected sites where can we see those infected sites number one pornographic sites yes you are happy you are enjoying watching pornographic sites but the tendency the computer is suffering because the computer is receiving or continuously receiving a viruses coming from those pornographic sites or downloading files from the internet coming from unknown sources so make sure that if you're going to download a file make sure that it comes from a known sources and not unknown sources but what are the different types of viruses we have what we call the boot viruses we have mbr vbr volume based record we have there another what we call the disk killer michelangelo and stone viruses sometimes the boot viruses infects floppy disk drives pen drives or flash drive 
a good scenario for this one is you shut down the computer but you were not able to remove the flash drive the floppy disk drive and the cd dvd cd dvd disk from the cd dvd room then tomorrow morning you're going to turn on the computer again you left the flash drive inserted to the usb port you turn on the computer the tendency the computer will read that one that's the time that viruses now will come or will arise to your computer system that is what we call now boot viruses that is why if you're going to shut down the computer make sure that you're going to remove any auxiliary storage devices such as cd dvd disk flash drive pen drive floppy disk we also have the smart card we also have what we call now program viruses the sunday and cascade now how can you say that you have a program viruses if you see the following dot com example finas.com that is a virus dot exe dot ovl dot driver or drv dot sys or the device driver once you saw this extension names to your computer meaning to say the computer now is being infected by a virus called program viruses either sunday or cascade we also have what we call now the multi-party viruses example invader flip and tequila a multi-party viruses is a hybrid of boot and program viruses it infects program files and when the infected program is executed these viruses infect the boot record but you can still resolve that using this defrag and this cleanup still viruses example frodo joshi and whale polymorphic viruses a polymorphic viruses cannot be easily detected by the computer system example involuntary stimulate cascade phoenix evil crowd 101 again this cannot be easily detected then we have the macro viruses example dmv nuclear word concept macro viruses coming from different ms offices example i created a file in microsoft word i save it using the file name technician you will see their technician that docs but you will be able to see another file technician that docs but with a different characters or symbol you need to say that file or your computer has been infected by a virus called macro viruses now how are we going to prevent viruses you have to install at least two antivirus software please do not install more than two antiviruses two antiviruses is enough to cure and to prolong the system computer you can use Symantec, AVG, Avas, Macafe, Norton, and Microsoft Antivirus. Why two? We also, we have already the default one, which is what called Windows Defender. That is the default one. Or Windows Shell. Then, ways on how are we going to remove the viruses? Buy or download antivirus software. But be careful. If you're going to download an antivirus program, Make sure that it comes from a known sources and not unknown sources. Install the antivirus software. Update antivirus software with the latest virus definition. Yes, you have an you have an antivirus software, but it is outdated already. Now please do remember this. Scan the computer at least once a week. Update your antivirus system or software at least twice a month again update or clean or clean the computer system using the antivirus once a week update your antivirus software at least twice a month methods of eliminating eliminating viruses remove the viruses if you scan it and 
viruses has been detected, it will be placed in the quarantine area. You go to the quarantine area and remove or permanently delete that viruses. Anti-spyware program. A typically signs of that you have an antivirus software program. You have a lot of pop-up windows. Never you open a Google Chrome, you're still not opening a, a certain social networking site, but different pop-up messages appears to your Google Chrome. What you need to do is go to the settings, click pop-up or notification, then block that URL. Okay? Protection from spyware. Use a pop-up blocker like Google Toolbar or you can go to your Google settings. Install anti-spyware utilities. Some that we recommend are Adware, AdAware, SpyBot, Search and Destroy, and CW Shredder. Now, another thing to prolong. So, you have to perform this cleanup, this defrag, scan this, antivirus, Windows update, and fix bugs and plug security holes in Windows. It maintain the system when we go when we talk about the different drivers such as the network driver, the sub driver, the USB driver. How are you going to update? To update, you can search Windows update. Just then just click Windows update if you're using Windows 8. Or you can now Go to the control panel, search for control panel, click system and security, click system, or click Windows update. The Windows update dialog box will be prompted on your screen. Perform now or install now the updates that is being needed by your computer to prolong the lifespan of the computer system. That is how easy you're going to install or update the driver. Configure a schedule for automatic updates so you can do that. It will automatically update it for as long as there is an internet. If there will be an internet, it will not automatically update. So you just have to go to the control panel again, search control panel. Click system. Then click system. You can click automatic updates. Yeah, you can click that one, automatic updates. So I'm six system. There. We have here the Windows update. You can click the Windows update or the advanced system settings. So click Windows update. There you can see now there. Check updates. Change settings, view update, restore hidden. So when we talk about change settings, you can change this one. Installed updates automatically recommended. You can choose if you would like to update the windows automatically or download updates if you choose to update that one manually. So that is windows update. Now backing up of files. What is the importance of backing up the, the files? That is, when suddenly the computer shut down, physically down, when suddenly you cannot use the computer already. So what you need to do is to back up your file to any auxiliary storage devices. What are those auxiliary storage devices that I am talking about? The CD on the DVD disc, flash drive, pen drive. We have the smart card. You can also back up the files using your Google Drive or OneDrive. To back up your file, you can go to the Start button, point to Accessories, click System Tools, then click Backup. Now, if it happens to be that you see the Backup or Restore Wizard, just click Next. On the Backup Restore page, click Next. Then just follow the steps that you can see here in backing up the computer. Schedule Backups. So, it is important for us to schedule the backups. Maybe it is once a month, or you can do that every two weeks. Backup the files, 
back up all your files so that if the computer suddenly shut down, physically down, or you can no longer use that one, you can still access the different files that is being stored to your computer. Changing an installed program and removing an installed program. Just simply go to the search button, then click control panel or search for control panel. Click programs. Click programs and pictures. Click the file that you would like to change or update or uninstall. Example, Adobe Acrobat. Click that one, then click change. If you click change, the computer will be asking you now to prepare installation, make sure that there is an internet connection. So just click next, next, next until you finish changing the Adobe Acrobat reader or the programs that you have chosen. To uninstall, you can simply click the file that you would like to uninstall. Example, I would like to uninstall. Let's look for a file that I would like to install. Uninstall. Example, Hot Potato 6.3. Uninstall. The computer will be asking you to confirm if you really would like to uninstall that program. When we talk about uninstall, remove that program for you no longer need or use that computer. If that's the case, just click yes. Then wait for the dialog box or the computer system to finish and installing the computer. Then you will receive this an alert message telling you that it has been successfully uninstalled or removed from your computer system. Just click OK, then you're done and installing the program. So I hope you've learned a lot on how are you going to prolong the lifespan of the computer. Let's go back again on, how, on what are we going to do. One, you have to clean the computer components or parts or peripherals of the computers. Two, you have to prepare or perform the three utility disks such as disk cleanup, scan disk, and disk defrag. Three, you have to avoid or you have to provide an antivirus software which will block all the viruses that will penetrate your computer system that will cause slowing down of the computer system. Fourth, updates the windows, the drivers, such as the network, the USB port. There. Then, what we need to do? Next, back up the files. Save all the files that you need so that when the computer system fails, you can still access those files. Next, if you would like to change a certain program, meaning to say you would like to update that program for you to continuously use that one. Lastly, remove or uninstall the programs that you no longer use to boost the speed of the computer system. So those are the different ways on how are you going to perform or maintain the computer system. I hope you've learned a lot. Bye everyone and see you in our next lesson.